Hi, boys and girls. Today in math, we're going to be working on another subtraction strategy. We're going to be practicing counting up and counting back. Here we go. Let's go ahead and start out with our math message for today. It says, you are playing salute with two friends. The dealer says the sum is 11 and the other player has an eight, what card do you have? So one player has an eight. Your card is a mystery. And the dealer says that the answer is 11. So what card do you have? If you said that your card was a three, you got it. Yay! So we know that you had the three. Eight plus three equals 11. I'm curious, what strategy did you use to help you figure out the answer three in that problem? Did you use the counting back strategy? Or did you use the counting up strategy? If you used the counting back strategy, you probably started at the number 11. You count back. So you would say 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I counted back 8 times because my starting number was 8. I end at the number 3, so that must mean that my card was a three. If you used the counting up strategy, you start at eight and you count up 11. So what would you say? You would say oh, nine, 10, 11. So again, for the counting up strategy, you probably started at 8 and you counted up until you got to 11. So that would be three counts. 1, 2, 3, 9, 10, 11. So because I did three counts, my card must be a 3. You could have used either one of these strategies to help you figure out the answer that you had. What number models can you write to represent this problem? Well, you could write 11 minus 8 equals blank. We would figure out eventually that it was a 3. Or you could write 8 plus what equals 11. So this would be the counting back strategy and this number model would be the counting up strategy. I want you to take a look at this new number model. I see 12 minus nine equals a mystery number. Go ahead and try to solve this problem using the counting up strategy and the counting back strategy. If you use the counting up strategy, you're going to start at nine and you're going to count up until you get to 12. So let's try that together, ready? So I say nine, but I write down the next number, nine, 10, 11, 12. How many numbers did you just write? Did you say three? That's correct.
Now go ahead and try the counting back strategy. You're going to start at 12 and you're going to count back nine whole numbers total. So let's try that together. Ready? I'm going to say 12 and then write down the next number. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Let me double check that I wrote nine numbers down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. My last number that I wrote was a 3, so 3 is my answer. Let's go ahead and try one more problem today. I see 11 minus 3 equals what? Again, we're going to use the counting up strategy to help us solve this problem. And we're going to use the counting back strategy to help us solve this problem. Which one would you probably most likely use? You could use either one. That's the beauty of learning how to do this both ways. Let's go ahead and look at the counting up strategy first. If I'm doing the counting up strategy, I'm going to start with the three and count up until I get to 11. So here we go. I'm going to say three. I'm going to think three, and then I'm going to start counting up after that. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. How many numbers did I write down after I said three? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is my answer eight? If you said yes, you are correct. Now let's go ahead and look at the counting back strategy. I'm going to start with 11 this time, and I'm going to go backwards three numbers. So I'm going to think 11 in my head, and then I'm going to write down the next three numbers that are going backwards. 10, 9, 8. 8 is the last number that I said, so 8 is the answer. On both occasions, counting up and counting back, we both got the number 8. When counting back, 8 was the last number I said. When counting up, I counted up 8 whole numbers, and I got the number 8 for my answer. Which way of solving this problem was the easiest for you? Which one was the most difficult? Go ahead and take some time and talk about that with a partner or your teacher. Did you say that counting back was a little easier to solve this problem? I think some of you would probably agree with me. Counting back was maybe a little easier because I only had to hop three times. With counting up, I had to hop eight times when I counted up. So I think maybe for this one, counting back was a little bit easier. Now I would like you to take a look at four separate subtraction problems. We have 9 minus 7, 18 minus 3, 15 minus 12, and 13 minus 2. Which of these problems would you use counting up? Which of these problems would you use counting back? Let's look at nine minus seven. If I start at seven and count up to nine, let's think about how many hops we would have to make to get to nine, ready? So I say seven and then I start counting seven, eight, nine. 
Guess what? My answer is two. I only had to make two hops. So in this case, nine minus seven, counting up, was easier to do in solving this problem. All right, now let's look at 18 minus three. When I think about these two numbers, and I think about these two numbers being on a number line, I know that 18 and three are pretty far apart on a number line. And I've learned that if numbers are pretty far apart on a number line, you're probably not going to want to use the counting up strategy. You're probably going to want to use the counting back strategy. So 18 take away three, I'm just going to count backwards three times. I could use the counting up strategy with this one, but it would take me a lot of hops to get from three all the way up to 18. So I think in this case, counting back would be the easiest way to solve this problem. Let's try it together. Put 18 in your head and count backwards three times. 18, 17, 16, 15. I counted back three times and my answer was 15. All right, let's look at the next one. 15 and 12. Oh, they are relatively close on a number line, wouldn't you say? So if the numbers are pretty close to each other on a number line, you're probably going to want to use the counting up strategy. If I start at 15 and hop backwards 12 spaces, that's going to take me a lot longer than starting at 12 and counting up to 15. So let's go ahead and use the counting up strategy. Start at 12 and count up to 15. Ready? 12, 13, 14, 15. I got three as my answer. This time my fingers told me the answer. All right, now let's look at the last one. What do you think, guys? Should we use the counting up strategy or the counting back strategy? If you said the counting back strategy, you are correct. When I think about the numbers, 13 and two, two is way at the beginning of the number line and 13 is a ways down on the number line. So those two numbers are pretty far apart from each other. And like I said, if the numbers are far apart from each other on the number line, counting back is probably your best bet. All right, so let's start at 13 and count backwards too. Ready? Say 13 and then start counting backwards two times. 13, 12, 11. My answer is 11. All of you did an excellent job today working on subtracting with me, counting up and counting back. I want you to think about this strategy as we go along in math this year. It will help you become a better mathematician. We're also going to turn in our math journals to page 40, sorry, page 48. On page 48, we are going to record this strategy in our box on that page, in the next box on that page. So go ahead and go to the next slide and you will see what you need to write in your strategy box. Go ahead and copy that into your math journal. You did an excellent job today. See you, bye-bye.